guys, welcome back to Everyday Struggle. Nadeska Wayno and Academics here. This is about to be Axe's favorite episode of Quarantine so far because we're about to talk about numbers for at least 20 minutes, right? <laughs> mm-mm, mm-mm. I mean, I do like numbers, but um, uh, listen, the, the whole theory of men lie, women lie, numbers don't, we're getting to realize it might be a little more complicated than that. <laughs> All right, so this is going to be, I think, the first time in the history of the show we actually start with act by the numbers, but it just makes sense today, so let's get it. Oh, it's my segment off rip. Off the yeah. rip. Okay, All right. Work. Well, well. I mean, I, I talked about like a couple of albums yesterday. You know, saluted. You know, Kalani and, and the others were doing a great job last week selling albums. But I didn't really get into talking about singles. Um, this week, uh, the singles uh, lineup actually had uh, Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande. They have a song together called "Stuck with You" that debuted at number one on the Hot 100 charts. Then we had Doja Cat. With her remix with Nicki Minaj, that was number two. That was number one the previous week, but it fell to number two this week. And number three was a debut by 6 9 and it was Gooba, okay? Uh, you know, a lot of people expected that, that that song would be, like, buying with the number one spot, but it actually fell to number three. Uh, the Weekend Blind Light was number four, and Megan Beyonce was number five. But uh, there was a lot of controversy with what the one to three spot were going to be. So that was the numbers off rip. So. All right. Thank you. That was nice and concise, academics. Mm. All right, look. So when uh, so 6 9 came home to his uh, millions of streams on IG Live, Gooba did really well on YouTube. So now he's really upset that he debuted at number three on the Billboard Hot 100. So posted a series of videos uh, in the past couple of days accusing Billboard of cheating and also accusing Ariana Grande and Bieber's team of buying the majority of those downloads and plays using six credit cards. Take a look. So listen, I want the world to know that Billboard is a lie. You can buy number ones on billboard i want that to register in your head you can buy number ones on billboard now let me tell you what happened we was having an ongoing investigation just now silvio from billboard right there's like probably five or six of them that come up with the, the charts with nelson and everything last thursday ariana was stuck with you submitted sixty thousand units last second with the investigation we found this they purchased half of those things with six credit cards. When we asked where was those six credit cards linked to, Billboard said we can't disclose that information. Understand this, they bought 30,000 and so units with six credit cards. Uh, this guy really is a marketing genius. So for some reason, Ariana and Bieber both decided to respond to 6 9 Ariana didn't actually mention his name, but she said our fans bought this song, never more than four copies each as the rule of state, uh, saying sales count for more than streams, um, basically told him to humble himself. Uh, Bieber also responded saying something similar and adding that 6 9 was actually counting global streams when he's when Billboard is only counting towards a domestic chart. And their manager, Scooter Braun, also got into it. And it sounded like he took a shot here. He said, there was an investigation this week, but it was into a video that had six times the amount of paid bot activity than the normal video. So this <laughs> went back and forth for a little bit. 6 9 really went crazy with the videos, started giving the sob story about his come up and how Ariana Grande would not understand. But... um. Do you guys feel like, is he just not counting the right numbers? And this, the shot that Scooter Braun took, uh, is there any truth to that? That nigga's a crybaby. <laughs> so he took all that shit, man. He's a, he's a crybaby. Yeah, and and yeah, people are investigating because I don't think that them live numbers is real, man. Uh, I'm, I'm oh, hearing that your man Oh, we think he scammed yeah, Instagram yeah. too. I was just talking about YouTube. Oh my yeah. God. Wayne was on five fake accounts. Yeah. I try think to try to see the Instagram models in there. But I, now I, you don't I didn't have that. To. Listen, another I didn't have to get on no fake accounts. I was going to have to see the shit regardless. You know what I mean? Your your page is a, a 6 9 tribute shrine. So it's like, what, what, do I, what do I have to get on the fake page to see? It, it covers what, the latest on? and greatest in hip hop. It's the, the latest and greatest. The latest so and greatest. Great. All right. So let's wait start. till Drake come around. Yeah, I think my post six. Wait till Drake drops his next album. Yeah, I, think yeah, I, I, I tolerate that. I would tolerate that. Yeah, you pick and choose. Yeah. Well, so let's start. At, let's start at the top here. So Bieber's point that he's counting the wrong streams uh, is that accurate? Um. So overall, here's the thing. I think I think some people empathize with with, with like six nine because. It seems like, yo, you have Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande, like two mega pop stars, right? And of course- Roddy like, Rich didn't if, complain about this. 
Mm. <clears throat> Carry on. Well, Roddy Rich had a number one song for shit for like a year. You get me? So you know, a chance to have a number one matters a lot for artists, and also you know, at least within the culture of what would make sense. Like, be honest. I heard that stuck with you song because of controversy. Now again, I don't listen to radio. You know, what I mean, I'm someone who's mostly online. But that's not something, and by the way, not that it's meant to be a cultural song that would even, like, connect or really is meant to hit my ears. But what song was everybody was talking about last week? It's this Google song. Let's be very honest, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, after seeing these ridiculous streaming numbers, which, shit, we could, we, could, we could have that conversation if we think all of that is real or not. We expected it to be up there where it would be number one. So to see uh, Bieber and Ariana's song, like kind of like just nudge it out of um, the top spot, not too surprising because that does happen, you know, a lot, but um, it was a little surprising, right? So what Bieber is saying, I believe Bieber. And here's the thing with 6 9 I'm going to keep the same, I'm going to keep a bit of the same energy I did with Nicki Minaj. It's tough luck, bro. You can't hate the player, hate the game. You know, mm. I don't... My thing is not the streams, right? So, so real quickly, the Billboard charts, and, and by the way, they published an article last night. So it's Billboard. They published an article last night explaining how did they do their Hot 100 charts. You get me? Like, 6 9 didn't even have 200, like, have all those millions of people that follow him on IG that listen to his songs, but he didn't have a 200,000 airplay audience in terms of radio. Radio is the second most influential thing even more than sales in that formula that they calculate like the placement. Right. The first is the first is stream. So it's streams, radio airplay, then the third is actually digital sales, right? Now he doesn't get any uh, um airplay, which is obviously a conversation like I think we know where that's going to go, right? And then uh everything that Bieber and them said, it made sense. A lot of a lot of stuff they did with strategy. They mm -hmm. said, "Yo, the 60,000 that you're talking about, now I don't know about the 6 credit card shit." That's not a while. And I don't know how you get proof on that or even get that information. But they said, bro, we submit our shit at the end of the week. What do you want to, you want us to tell you every day um, how much uh, comes through the web store? And it goes back to the conversation um, to try to be concise again. What? It goes what? back to the conversation we had yesterday, which this is the bundles situation. Mm -hmm. The 60,000 were bundles. Well, they said they were the physical signed copies too, right? Last minute that really helped. Yeah, it, it, like some physical copies mixed with like these like bundles that were it, it's incentive packs for for I mean, um someone to buy a song. Yeah, that happens. You know, I can't say I'm mad at a, a signed CD. I'm sorry, I, I can't say I'm mad at a signed CD. You know, I think what it is is that Six Nine is more mad at the data than he's mad at them. Mm -hmm. You get me? Yeah, because but, here's the thing. He's he was looking at a lot of forecasts and when he was talking about yo don't rob us, yeah that didn't include the <laughs> data that was gonna be submitted by the web store of like Bieber and, and Ariana. So when that happens on the last day, you know it feels like oh shit how, how come we didn't learn about that? Unfortunately, the game is the game and I can't I can't you can't hate the actual yo, game of what's going on. Don't rob us. I mean he used his his whole promotional tool is his entire controversy. It's not like he he waited to. So things simmered down, and he just wanted to do an interview and then put out a song. So he tried to use his whole shit. He tried to use his whole thing to trick the system, and it backfired on him. Yeah, the, the, the fact that he provoked a response from Bieber and Ariana Grande is a little bit crazy to me. So he pointed to the fact that people like Jay-Z and Nicki Minaj have talked a lot about the numbers being skewed. We heard Cole rapping about this, people getting their numbers from streams. But what about Scooter Braun saying that he might have had some bots helping him with that Gooba video on YouTube? But look, Stretch. just last week, this is what I'm saying. Last week, he just was like, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. I'm just telling you, numbers don't lie. And then a week later, now the numbers is lying. Like, nigga, <laughs> make up your mind. Stop it. Like, you, it, 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 the thing about 6 9 is that he's acting like, even if people were doing some funny shit so that he doesn't, like, get to certain spots, like, he doesn't know why. You know why, nigga. <laughs> like, you know why people ain't fucking with you. Now everybody wants, he wants everybody to be fair. He wants everybody to play fair when it comes to his music. People just don't like him. That's, he just has to deal with that. He has to deal with who he is now. That's it. Yeah. Well, I, I do think he, he came to the harsh realization that you'll, you'll never be a victim like how you used to be again. 
<laughs> like he was trying to be like, yo, I was a young artist like coming up. Yeah, like, yo, I had a shit. dream. And then I think everybody was looking at him like, nigga, we don't care. <laughs> nigga, you're we old. really I, don't give a fuck. Listen, he's older. And it's one of those times where, you know, a lot of sympathy plays um, worked for him in the past. But I think this time around, like, people saw him more like a crybaby. Again, maybe not to the effect of, like, the Queen Radio calling out Stormy. You get me? No, no, but no, people but... saw him like a crybaby. See, the thing with, with when Nikki did Queen Radio and all of that, why everybody might, a lot of people viewed it as her crying about shit. She had mad valid points. It's just that her delivery was a little bit, was a little bit stern, which was scaring motherfuckers. People get scared when Nikki start yelling. With him, <laughs> he just, this nigga just, like, come on, brother. Like, stop it. Like, you know why, you know why people not fucking with you. You can't, like you said, you can't play that sympathy card. He can't, he can't play the, Rainbow headed kid. This nigga's older than Zion Williamson. I don't want to hear he's a kid no more. He's a grown ass man that made decisions and it's going to affect everything your music, your promotion, whether you get tons of views. I just feel like people is not really into his music like that. And the people who are streaming it, it's just kids that's like, I want to see him be over all these other people. No, well, I think he also, another realization he came to is, is the very stern realization that. Despite all these fans you have and what they might do for you streaming wise, being the industry black sheep or essentially being blackballed, Billboard don't fuck with you. They delete your chart history. Right. You don't get a single motherfucking editorial playlist on Spotify. The labels got Spotify by the balls. They get everybody playlisted. Right. Okay? Apple don't fuck with you. They ain't give you a single editorial playlist. The, the labels got Apple too because they got all the streaming services because they th th their catalog is the content. They don't fuck with you. When you have all these entities that don't fuck with you, radio as well don't fuck with you. Right. You might exist, but if you think you're going to, um, on, on a monthly or yearly basis, remain this top artist, you're going to be delusional. We're not at that point yet where it only matters what your stream is because here's the also reality that I looked at it and I and I said, that's why the game is the game. Huh. All of these labels are rigging the numbers to a certain extent. You get me? Whatever the numbers is, everybody's adding that extra 20, 30% juice. Okay? Whether it's like, and, and, and shit, I was, I believe Scooter. The paid bot views. Shit. You know, I've done, a, done some research. I'm hearing that every time there's a top video. I don't want to throw no names because I don't impute anybody's integrity as well. Okay. And by the way, when we talk about why did Bieber and Ariana respond, I get it. You know, I think some people figure out the Formula 6 time. If you respond or engage, even no matter what you say, and by the way, he's an expert marketer, you give him what you want. But when someone is, is basically putting a stain on a number one record, a feel-good moment for you, now you're going to be look like a cheater if you don't say nothing. There's, mm. there's basically almost no high road to take. They took the highest possible road, which still meant responding, right? Well, mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, from what I, I've done some, I've done some research, man. All these labels are rigging a lot of shit. Some sales are getting siphoned in there, mm -hmm. right? Playlisting, playlisting. You know, even I, I'm not gonna get the playlisters today. Okay, but, but, right. but streams as well, streams as right. well. So streams as well. W whether it's YouTube, whether it's like a a, a video, like, like I'll give you a quick an example, just random. It's no way that I should be watching a blue face video. That's a YouTube video, and he got like thirteen million views on YouTube, and I go go to Spotify, and they're showing global numbers. Both of them, YouTube mm -hmm. and Spotify, they're showing global numbers. Right. YouTube, thirteen million. This shit ain't hit 500,000 streams yet. Mm. Like, it's, it's, the numbers ain't really matching up. You get yeah. me? Like, it's not consistent. L little Pump, I see the same thing, too. Again, I know there's some fishy shit going on. I think Scooter Braun almost kind of, you know what I mean? Like, I think that's the thing that everybody's like, yo, 6 9 I know you've been snitching, but keep snitching on the gangsters. Oh, Don't man. come over here and snitch on <laughs> the fucking brother. finesses. <laughs> That we all See, now do. We gotta... A manager is going to be the one who takes it down. So look, right now, Google <laughs> is at about 168 million on YouTube. So if we're talking that allegedly bots had a hand in this, are we talking about millions of streams that were faked? Millions? Man, that shit is the largest tree that fell in the uh, 
fell in the fucking forest analogy. I think, like, the thing is, is this is like, okay, I think that none of the DSPs just want to be associated with him. Um, and not not just because of his background. I think that when he does something, like, if he does something successful, he's just going to exploit it to the point where, like, if he had a billboard, he'd been saying so much about billboard and, like, how he's the king of billboard and he runs billboard that people just don't, from a PR point, want to be associated with that. You know, I think, yeah, it's people don't want to support him for whatever reasons, but even with the um him giving his donation and it being rescinded, right? Like, of course, if they got to check everybody who gives donations, they'd be there all day, like their backgrounds. But I think people just don't want to be associated with him because he's going to exploit it so crazy on social media and it's going to make a story that only really benefits him. So that's why people are like taking a step back a bit, not just because he's snitched or ratted and none of that shit. Well, I'm talking about just from a professional standpoint. No, I think the second part has a lot to do with it, honestly. What's like, I, I I look at it, this is where where a lot of people don't, um like, get it on, right? Like, this level. It's like, the people who are in power, uh, in places of power, in all these places, mm -hmm. right? These are people who came up during a different era. Let's be very clear, right? A a and... They they might not again while they will try to be objective while doing their job, seeing someone openly, flagrantly, you know, go against stuff that they might even be yeah. with. You get me? Like again, I I don't want to just name names or anything, but look at the people who are are, are um like of in high high places of power when it comes to YouTube music, when it comes mm -hmm. to Spotify, when it comes to app. Like like a lot of these people were either used to be journalists or industry people that came up. During certain mm -hmm. different times, right. so trust me, I don't think they're like, "Yo, oh, great!" Like we don't give a fuck if you stand. No, no, this, this now matters. So I remember even talking to him, and I told him, I said, "Bro, you have to realize that th there are people who are gonna have their opinions about you and shit that and might go into yeah." yeah and it's not coming not from just like an industry shit. place either, right? Like to your point, act people who came up a journalist, whatever. These are people who actually care about the culture and have invested decades of their lives so it's not coming from a malicious place i think a lot of it i don't know if this is where you're getting at is also about a respect it's like a culture that you love and respect and if someone's going to be wildly disrespectful i don't think anyone feels like they owe him anything and that's right. fair enough yeah you and know? and also you know while we're waiting on the first artist that does a collab i <laughs> you're think waiting. all these other entities are looking like who's gonna be the one because nobody wants to be the first i think spotify looking like is Apple going to play this thing? And I think Apple looking like Spotify. With that thing, uh, rap cap. It's going to be Acom, but nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares if he does a show with Acom. Like, <laughs> exactly. But um, I do think, I, I, I think, I think this kind of proves that, you know, we live, we live on numbers so much, but the numbers to a certain extent is rigged. Um, not only that, we get to realize that, to be honest, it is a little bit political. You have to, you have to admit it is kind of political in how the Hot 100 charts are, are kind of made up. And to be honest, I think it's very clear that the industry don't fuck with him. Like they're not featuring his shit at Duh. all. And <laughs> it's well, 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 well. Usually, the common thought was that it was the people like in the culture. Like, yeah, of course, the gangster rapper not gonna fuck with you. The person who came from the hood ain't gonna fuck with you. Not the fucking editor at Billboard, you know what I mean? And the two staff writers who write on hip hop, no. So it is what it is. Like he has to just accept that this is. Here's the thing. This is why you're big, though. Pause. Right. Like this is why your career has gotten to this point. The controversy. Wow. Yeah. Oh. The controversy. <laughs> people hating you. You being polarizing. You drawing attention and eyes, but you have to. You have to. That comes with some people saying, "Nah, I don't want to be a part of it." And you got to take the good with the bad. It's all bad. It's all bad. <laughs> That's a good summary, Wayno. Thank you. <laughs> it's all terrible. All right, so real quick, um, might as well wind down with some more numbers. You know, Chris Brown and Young Thug dropped a project a couple weeks ago called Slime and B. Uh, so when the sales came in, it only did about 19K, I think, first week. So French Montana hopped in, asked comments, just to point out the low sales. He said, I'll be dead wrong if I say something, but you know, I love Chris. We squashed the drama with Thug. I really like this album. And I think it should have been promoted more. So Young Thug, of course, responded, just pointing out that the project was on SoundCloud for a few days because they didn't want to deal with the label thing. Chris really wanted to put it out on his birthday. Now mind your little biz. So um, <laughs> does French even, I don't know why he would dig in knowing that Young Thug was tied at him like less than a month ago. Uh, yeah. But what do you guys think about his point here? I don't know. It doesn't seem like I mean, they care that much about the, the numbers. 
Yeah, I mean, they didn't care about the numbers. First of all, like a, a Chris Brown, Young Thug project was the last thing I thought we'd be getting this year. Secondly, yeah, like the numbers came in the way they did because they put it on SoundCloud, right? Like th- as the high caliber artists that they are, you don't go to SoundCloud for their content. You're thinking straight to Spotify, straight to Apple Music, top of the box, you know what I mean? At, at mm-hmm. Premium, whatever looks. And I, it again... Yeah, they didn't go through the label shit, but eventually they had to. So they should have just did it from the start. That's the whole problem. Because once once they put it on SoundCloud and the numbers is ringing crazy because it's fucking Chris Brown and Young Thug, now they got to work backwards, you know? So they should have just planned and prepped it a little bit more. But, you know, yeah, French, like, it, you, it, you, I don't think... I don't think French could say anything like like French could really say to Young Thug on his page, "Happy birthday!" When it's his birthday, Young Thug is still gonna say something. <laughs> and you, you know, still I call think, him Auntie, yeah. Yeah, he's still gonna call him Auntie French. He's still gonna, you know. But I think Young Thug. I, I don't think it's as serious as it was before. You know, mm-hmm. I just think that you know, Thug ain't really jacking it. And I, French, I don't think French even feels no way about it anymore. You know what I mean? Because he yeah. said he like he actually liked it. Hey, you know what the funny thing is, I think I think French has learned from me. <laughs> I think he's learning in uh, he's learned the art of a backhanded compliment. I think he wants to highlight <laughs> the fact that that shit did low sales. You get me, but you got to shout it out, yo. Oh man, I can't believe this one flopped. Oh man. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I really slept on this one, man. This I do it all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's that's a very classy way of throwing shade by the way. You get me? Yeah. Oh my god, I can't believe this flop. Thug like like Thug Chris Brown Man, y'all should have really supported this. And <laughs> it was like he knew that was there was no plan to promote the shit. But then yeah. you just throw it on a promo. Man, they should have promoted this shit more. Man. Damn, <laughs> damn, man, <laughs> damn. And of hey. course, yo, French is so French is so slick. <laughs> when Young Thug responds, French <laughs> throws up his album and he says so 578,000 <laughs> yo French is good man French is good French is good French is good the I know but it's the... just like this is why I'm so tired of the fucking numbers conversation yo because nobody's saying if the music is actually better than the upper music it's just like that shit and hey, we all know why French had those numbers like come on yeah, like... hey let me tell you this man uh, <laughs> this era in hip hop is almost just as bad as, I think it's worse, actually. It's worse than... Remember when people said, like, music changed when 50 got on, like, Hot Night yeah. 7 now the South Scan charts? Yeah. Yo, I think niggas, the, niggas... Niggas might have the best album possible, and it's a concise 14 album, and they say, nah, fuck that. Add the five throwaways. We need these streaming numbers. Yeah. Like, this shit matters, yo. Rappers are bragging about sales to each other. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I've I mean, never seen Young Thug as a sales, sales. guy. Rappers always bragged about sales, but it's just like the perception of how people consume it. Because before, people didn't take it as, oh, how much is sold? I got to listen to it. Remember we was talking about certain albums, we ain't going to name no names. But it was like, all right, this shit came out. And it was like, ah, right, I'm cool. And then the numbers came out. I was like, oh, I got to hear that shit. Yeah, yeah. shit. <laughs> you know, it's, it's so funny. I was watching niggas on Twitter last night, which I hate Twitter. But uh, I was watching niggas on Twitter. Like, again, we talked about it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Lil TJ drops a seven-track EP. Again, I just think it's an EP. Don't look at it too serious. You know what I mean? Got a lot of features. They're on Twitter joking about it because of the sales. Because remember, Lil TJ was saying, like, he's king. How's somebody going to say, they were like, yo, this nigga dropped a tape called State of Emergency. Look like this nigga career in a state of emergency. <laughs> that's not sales. fair, though, man. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. No, no, no. Well, I only yeah. bring that up. And TJ's my man. TJ's my yeah, man, yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I definitely get why the numbers what was what it is. Yeah, right. But fans are now like, that's the thing you throw out there instantly. So, by the way, mm. that's why it goes back to that first conversation we had. All these labels realize if you if your priority artist or artist you're trying to build, you have to have the numbers be a little fluff to mm-hmm. give that perception of facade that is lit. Well, yeah. let's not forget that academics plays a big role in this numbers. Oh, media. yes, it does. I love it. I love it. Love it. I so love good. it. All right. I wouldn't feel good if we ended this episode without talking about something besides numbers. So how about this? We know that DMX would love to go at it with Jay-Z and Versus. Good chance that's not going to happen. But here's Nori spilling secrets. Apparently, he wasn't really supposed to say this, but he said it anyway. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Eminem would be down to battle DMX on Versus. Would this be good or not? I would love to see them both. But I'm trying to imagine Eminem and, and DMX, like their music going back and forth in verses. The funniest thing, I mean, the best thing about this is going to be the commentary. 
It's going to be the commentary and the jokes is going to be the best thing about this. But me personally, I don't want to see DMX or Eminem for that. I don't feel like people are like just above it, like above just doing it. But I don't want to see DMX on, on, on IG Live. And I don't want to see Eminem what? on IG Live. I, Wait, period? I you mean together that. or just at all? Well, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see them two going song for song. You know, I I, I really don't want to see no shit like that because it just it's it's too much about that that tells me it's not gonna go right. Not in a negative way. It's just gonna go in a way that is gonna make a thousand memes. It's gonna the 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 whole message of the music is gonna be thrown out the window because of the memes and everything else that's gonna happen in between. I don't think that that will go good. What if we make sure that they both have good Wi Fi? Academics to the rescue for that one because I don't I don't, I don't know. I, Act, you gotta make I, sure. I just can't even see like DMX on the Wi Fi. <laughs> like, you feel me? I see DMX. I don't even want to get no jokes. Did you, you know what did you I love his DMX. prayer in the park? He, he was doing the prayers in the park on IG Live. Yeah, and, and I see he popped up one time on Quarantine Red. But what I'm saying is that when when that day comes, something always fucks up. I will say this though, in terms of verses, I don't. Th- by the way, I don't think no one's above it. And, and by the way, I think that even Jay and and DMX would be a better. Like, you know, again, these aren't like, yo, yo I'm battling you, son. This is more like Man, a, yo, remember you, this what the era. Fuck is that? <laughs> That's a New York shit. You feel me? Oh, um, it, it, it's more of a, hey, maybe our time periods overlap or we, we might have existed. Like, at least our music was, like, popping around the same time. Let's do an exhibition and <laughs> we're just seeing who had songs that people, you give like, oh, shit. You feel me? So I don't really look at it as a battle. Here's the thing, though. I feel like with the technical issues and some of the shit you're saying, it turns into memes and all that. I'm not saying that we should just, like, not do it until we're out of quarantine because I feel like this should be bigger. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I just feel like we shouldn't have, like, we shouldn't have a Wi-Fi issue when we're watching, like, this heavily promoted, highly anticipated thing by, by Luda and Nelly. All I'm saying is Versus got to send some camera crews to their houses. And I know this is quarantine and we try to stay away. But trust me, we cannot rely on the internet. And the production value got to be a little bit greater. Like, if I'm thinking M and I'm thinking DMX, the production value got to be a little bit greater. I want five cameras on these niggas, man. Fully mic'd up. If we're not in quarantine act, none of these Versus shit happens. They've been trying to do this shit for years. The only reason why it's been happening is because niggas in the house. Once everything is back or when it ever gets kind of back to normal, ain't nobody doing this shit. I'm, I'm just keeping it on it. They're not going to be in no stadium, him on the side, him on that side. It's not going to happen. Well, maybe not a stadium, but damn, your first is <laughs> send a camera crew over there that that like people could watch it live and then watch the playback. Y'all can edit it up. You get me? Because like what happens now is that, yo, your thought after watching somebody struggle with their Wi-Fi, you see people in the comments, yo, yo, tell everybody to get off the Wi-Fi. Restart your router. Like, come <laughs> on, man. Like, that shit is not what we came to see. Nice. But... Um, I'll see. I watch. Yeah, it. yo, look, if we're if we're here for a few months more, I don't think they're gonna send camera crews, but they can send the camera kit, a nice lighting ring, some mics, all that stuff. That's what they're doing for us. We're all filming at right. home. We just you, you see me struggling every day to set up my equipment, <laughs> my equipment right. over here. So, let's see. Let's see. Do, do, do you think that DMX, a nigga who once said, "What the fuck is a Google?" Do you think he's the okay. person to All sell right. to send a <laughs> self installation? You think like at, at DMX is the only fucking person in this house academic? Give DMX <laughs> some more credit, man. Stop man. it. I'm just all right, bro. All, all right, man. So no one really wants to see DMX versus Eminem, but let's see if it happens. Anyway, thank you guys for watching Everyday Struggle. We gotta go. We'll see you here tomorrow.